All right, go ahead. Great, good, thank you, Megan. Uh, I'm gonna call the meeting of the Library Board of Directors for Monday, May 17th at 6.02. Okay, first thing on our agenda is public input. Is anyone here? Uh, oh, hi, Jan, you just joined us? Yeah, I just did. Thank you, yeah. I don't see any public. Um, correspondence and announcements, Megan? have some correspondence. I received an email from a resident of Bethel, uh, Pat Rist. So I'm just gonna read her uh, email to the board. So the topiary, although artificial, placed in the urns are too tall for this site. And to clarify, she's talking about the front of the Sealy House where the Barnum statue is. When the Barnum statue site was chosen, it was to blend in with the library columns and sight lines from all directions. Adding anything with height to the urns takes away from the balanced look of the site, as does the tree. When a sculptor chooses a site, he envisions the entire site that benefits the visibility of the statue. Please take into consideration planting only low growth annuals in the urns and removing the tree. Thank you in advance. Regards, Pat Rist. Well, thank you, Megan. Um, Megan and I have talked about this and- I just, oh, I'm sorry. I was oh, just gonna yeah. say one thing is I took it upon myself to put in the topiary. So that was my doing. I did that. I took the old plants out and I put topiaries in just so everybody knows that's- that, that It's was your my, fault. It's well, your fault. Not, well, well, but it was, uh, I, I did that. Hello. Uh, I think it's really up to us um, what we do on the outside. And if Tia was kind enough as a board member to, on her own, put in plants, I personally think they look very nice. So um, I think it's nice that Pat is interested and concerned about our library. But I think at this point, uh, if it's all right with the rest of the board members, I'd just like to thank her for her interest and her um, input. i go along with that. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. I mean, I think the statue is well received in town. I think that the, there really are no problems out there that we can see. Um, and the urns we can deal with when we can talk to you into doing something different if we decide to. So I personally like them to you, so. Are we talking about the urns and the tree or just the urns that, when you say leave it alone? I'm well, at this point we're, we're talking about both, Robin. Okay, because I took a walk by and I, um, I I did see the point about the tree blocking the statue a little bit, but um, the urns I thought looked great. So I I don't know, but obviously. Um, just to note, the tree's been there for six years. The tree has been really, um, and it was planted to replace two other trees that were cut down. Okay. So the library board in oh, what year was it? Two thousand fifteen. The library board paid to have those trees planted after the tree warden in 2014 deemed the previous two trees to be diseased and needing to be removed. So the tree has been there for quite a long time. And I think it's perspective, Robin, where you stand. True, true, I agree. And once the tree gets bigger, it's not going to block the statue because the exactly greenery will be up higher. So. Yeah, I, I'm fine with it. I just was questioning what. I think we have more concern about our gardens and our flowers and things. So um, it's it's an on, ongoing project for us, I think, uh, the outside. Mm -hmm. The only other thing that I would say about the tree is that it also was planted in pretty much the same location as the, the very mature tree that was taken down. <laughs> so, um, it's not like a, a you know, it, it, the only thing that was different is that it's a, sh it's obviously shorter and of course bushier um, at that, at that site. So that, that's the only thing. I mean, it has been there for quite some time and we've never heard anything prior to this uh, time about it. So I think. Are, are we required to take any action or we can just acknowledge that's comment and I move on opinion and and um she just had some concerns and and hopefully um she'll be satisfied with what we do 
but uh, no, certainly no one else has complained. And if you all take a ride by, I mean, I think everything looks fine. The tree is not a problem. And the, the topiaries are not real. So they're, it's not like they're going to grow. And <laughs> Nor do they have to be watered or no, will they turn? turn um, exactly. yeah. So, uh, yeah. I think the biggest, the, the biggest problem with all of the urns that are out there and the ones that face on School Street is I've been trying to maintain them for the last couple of years. They, they get weedy. People use them as um, garbage sites. I'll just call it that nicely. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's very hard to grow anything in them because they're, they're they really are meant to be more ornamental than than to be planters. So um, you know, weeds won't grow. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, I thought it looked okay. But and certainly it's a subject for the future when we we look at our outside, our gardens need some care, and perhaps maybe we will move the urns or perhaps we will put something different in them, but but I think it's up to us. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Any other correspondence, Megan? No, that is all I have for today. Great, good, thank you. Um, approval of the minutes for from the April 26th meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the April 26th meeting. Thank you, Connie. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, um, that was Robin. Uh, any discussion? Any abstentions? Yeah, I abstain because I wasn't out of the meeting. Um, Ted, I don't think you were at this meeting either. No. No. Okay, uh, I, I thought I was, but you. All those in favor of approving the minutes from April 26th signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Would, would Tia, I mean, I'm uh, sorry. Mary. Great, thank you. Uh, treasurer's report, Tia. And by the way, Tia, thank you for taking the minutes tonight. You're welcome. Okay, um, so did everyone have an opportunity to take a look at the, um, the treasurer's report? Mm -hmm. Yes. Any, any questions, comments? Move to approve the report. Second. Was that Ted's second? That was Ted. Okay, thank you. <laughs> More discussion on the treasurer's report? I have one question. This Donna made a donation to the active dreaming program fee. What is that? No, no, no. She was the um, presenter for that active dreaming. And oh. so the, um, the $200 was her um, payment for doing the program. Oh, I see. Because it's under donations, I didn't realize. Okay. Yeah, no, if it's a donation, it will say donation like the one above. It's got a number on it. That means it had a check. Do you see that 1242? Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else? All those in favor? Signify. Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank you, Tia. Another month of good figures. <laughs> uh, Jan, Friends of the Library Report. I had to unmute myself, I forgot. Uh, I, have, I have nothing really to report because we don't meet until tomorrow, until Wednesday. Oh, okay. This month turns out your meeting is ahead of ours. Yes, so we're a week early. Um, yeah, the calendar is really weird together thinking that Memorial Day was we thought it was the 24th and it's the 24th. So, <laughs> extra early <laughs> I'll have something next time <laughs> all right that's great we we thank you for joining us and we look forward to you visiting with us next month thank you good okay chairman's report um, it's been a very interesting uh, month. I would really like to just take a minute to thank Megan and her wonderful staff for the smooth opening of our library. Um, it was minimal problems and the staff did a fantastic job putting everything in place and uh, we're off and running. So Megan, thank you and please thank your staff for us. Here, here. <laughs> thank you. All right. Are there anything else? No, and I'm going to move on to um, to your report. Okay. 
So a couple things. Um, one, uh, thank you for allowing us to close the building um, on May 7th. It was extremely helpful. We were able to accomplish a lot. While we didn't finish everything, we got enough in place that we were able to, over the course of the following week, uh, complete the rest of the tasks we had. Uh, it's been a slow trickle of people coming in. Um, we've had quite a bit of computer usage, uh, new faces, so we're certainly seeing use, but we're not seeing a lot of people lingering aside from the computers right now. So things are moving along. Good. Uh, does anybody have any questions regarding the statistics? I was thinking next year, you will probably look fantastic compared to <laughs> Well, what I'm gonna do is I set up next year's report to match against the previous year. So we won't be comparing next year to this year. We're gonna go back. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, good that's idea. Uh, so the spending report, um, I just, let me pull that up a second. Okay, so to give you an update, um, I wanted to just touch on the equipment maintenance budget. Uh, this month, we did actually spend out the remainder of that budget. We have purchase orders right now we're waiting on delivery for. So I do want you to know that account line has been spent. The uh, adult books, teen books and children's books, those are on track. Um, I just wanna note that we are still having delays with invoices. Um, and last month I was asked about the adult book budget being lower than in the past. And um, I discussed this with Tom and we did note too that another reason for the decrease is typically Tom makes purchases based on patron requests. So often on a bi-monthly basis, he'll put in an order and we have had fewer of those this year just because we haven't been open to the public. So that is also a factor in why it is lower, but we do anticipate being on track for the end of the year with that account. Um, does anybody have any questions about the spending report otherwise? Okay. Nope. Right here. Um, programming, we're picking up again. We're gonna have our first uh, two in-person programs this week. We're starting with small programs like our knitting group and our book club, which tend to have between five and 10 people. We've cleared out the Parloa room for our program of 10 and the Sealy House for a program of five. Uh, masks are gonna be required in the program. So this will be our first test to see how we do having people um, in a room together. And uh, the next step will be offering outdoor story times again, like we did last year. So we are on track to reintroduce our programming. Most likely this summer, we will not come close to where we were two years ago, but this is a good starting point for us. Then, um, so we've had some staffing changes take place. We, um, I'm very sorry to say, we are gonna be losing uh, Katie Digon at the end of the month. She is our senior library assistant of technology and programming. Uh, she has accepted a full-time position at the Wallingford Library, which um, is a, a step up for her. It is a librarian position. Um, I think that she's gonna do very well there. So we are excited for her, but a little disappointed for ourselves. Um, so with that, we are going to be updating her position along with the vacant library assistant position within the reference and technology department. So if you're on the personnel committee, you should expect hearing from me very soon. Um, Tom has completed revisions on the job descriptions. I'll be reviewing them this week and then reaching out to get those approved so we can move forward quickly with getting those positions. <laughs> um, on the positive, we have uh, filled one of the library clerk positions with um, an Alexandra Pedroza, uh, it's P-R-E-D-R-O-Z-A. Uh, and then the second library clerk position, we have made an offer. We're just waiting back for a response. So the hope is by the end of the week, we'll have two um, filled library clerk positions. Then Megan, will, will that fill all our, our requirements for now? 
and then for now. Yeah. yeah, we don't that that doesn't fill the entire circulation department, but at this time there's not a need to fill all those positions. Um, circulation is still half of what it was two years ago. And since people are not lingering right now, we're able to keep up with it. As we get busy again, we'll reassess and determine what to do from there. Um, Tom, can you just give a quick update on the AARP tables? Sure. Um, we put the tables on order uh, early last week, and they're on track to be delivered. It's a five to six week lead time. Um, so they'll contact me when it gets closer. I ask them to so that I can coordinate with Parks and Rec uh, to get the site prepared. The tables from uh, the ones that are out there from Macauer um, will be removed. They'll um, take up the grass and put in, I believe we discussed the discussed mulch um, to go down in there. And that way, uh, and they'll do it so that one of the tables will be a nice, easy, ADA compliant, acceptable um, location. And then the other two uh, sort of in a, like a, a triangle pattern um, uh, out there right now, uh, near-ish, uh, well, right where the tables are. Um, so yeah, that's going well, and it should uh, should all come together. Do you notice a lot of people using them? I would say anecdotally, yeah. Um, I use them myself for lunch periodically, and at least there's usually at least one other person seated at them. I'll look out, um, you know, if I'm down in the children's department or over by Barbara's off, uh, desk, and sure enough, there's people sitting there. Um, and you can tell by what's left behind, uh, that people are using them, uh, after hours as well. So <laughs> I, um, I drive around town a lot going back and forth. And I'd say after four o'clock, there's almost always someone sitting at them and the weekends, specifically in the morning hours, they are always being used. Great. Um, then just a quick update on the friendship bench. Uh, Deb Cleland sent me the information. I'm going to move forward with um, just checking with state contractors to see if there are any state discounts on the bench, but we're not going to move forward with any ordering on that until after the AARP project is finished. So we're really looking at installation for end of August, beginning of September for marketing in um, October but we are in the process of getting that arranged. Um, my last thing for this evening is, um, I'm sure many of you heard uh, or the CDC's guidelines on masks and um, Governor Lamont's announcement for May 19th. Um, this has not given us a lot of time to assess and make a determination on how we're gonna handle it. Um, but as of right now, I would like to move forward with still requiring staff to wear masks and putting signage outside that highly encourage the public to continue wearing a mask. Um, if the board is comfortable with that, that's what I will move forward with. Sounds very sensible to me. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. So Megan, just to make it clear, the staff will be required to wear masks and the public will be encouraged to wear, wear masks. Is that what you're saying? That, yes. Uh, Tia? Are you gonna continue with that, um, sta that um, sanitation station right in as you walk in and ask people to do their hands? We stopped asking people to sanitize their hands um, about two weeks ago. Uh, most people still do. Oh. But at this point, it, it creates more problems than it solves. Some people okay. get offended. Um, it's also difficult because now that the second floor is open, we no longer have a supervisor at the entrance, and it puts more of a burden on the circulation staff who are also at the same time answering phones and checking out items. So will you keep the, it out so people can, if they want to sanitize their hands, they can? Absolutely. Okay. Um, the Do other direction from town hall on this and what they're going to do. Town hall put out a statement today um, that they're only requiring non-vaccinated employees to wear masks, but they're also still doing 
people have to check in to enter the building. Um, so I'm not really sure that at this point we can associate the library's practices with the municipalities since they have far more control over how many people are in the building at a time, whereas we're going to see far more foot traffic. And my other concern is that it's going to be very difficult to encourage the public to wear masks if the staff's not wearing masks. I'm in total agreement with you. I just wondered what they were, you know, what they were advocating. I, I think that we're doing the, the responsible thing. We want to keep our staff. And unless you have pushback from the staff, I, I see nothing wrong with the. My feeling is we do this for a month and we can always at the next board meeting reassess and change that decision if need to. I also think stores are going to still require them. So what depends on the store. Yeah. I don't know what, why everybody's in such a hurry to go maskless myself. It seems kind of foolish, but. Well, I, I the, school, the schools are still required to wear masks through the end of the year. And because we also do cater to children who currently cannot get vaccinated under the age of 12, you know, we are also have to consider the fact that we are going to have at least a third of our patrons coming in unvaccinated. So do you want a motion from us to yes for, for this procedure or um that would be very helpful um it would also give the staff the ability to say that um as per the library board's instruction these are the steps we're taking at this time um and the board will reassess in june in the end of june yeah i think that's good yeah. i entertain a motion from someone to this so moved you want to do it uh could could we state the motion as a thank as a you, whole? Ted. Thank you, Ted. Because <laughs> I couldn't quite figure it out. <laughs> I know I was a little. I, thank I, you, I sir. If you want, I make a motion that the staff continue to wear their mask, and that we encourage all patrons to wear their mask when they come in to the library. Excellent. That's thank you. Are you comfortable with that? Yes. Megan, okay. Oh, Megan. Want to second it? I second. I, I think yeah. we had a motion from Judy. Oh, we had a second. Yeah. Right. I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, who, Actually, who made this? She really didn't make I a motion. Made motion. So. Bonnie made the motion, right? And so Ted seconded? Second the motion. Okay. Okay. And Tia, would you repeat the motion for everyone, please? So the motion is that. Um, that the staff will continue to be masked and that we will encourage all patrons to wear masks when they come into the library. Do we say staff will be required to? I think it needs to be say required to, yeah. Okay. So that we make it clear. Okay, so staff will be required to wear masks and um, patrons will be encouraged to wear masks when they come into the into the library. Sorry to be picky, but should we say they're required for the foreseeable future, or do we need to qualify that in some way? Or oh, saying that they're vaccinated. I think yeah. I think we should just say it for it's next. Required at the time. And then when we we can always have a motion to change that. That's mm -hmm. some... Okay. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried, thank you. Um, Megan, I hope that's enough direction for you then and hopefully it won't be any problems. Yep, and if there's an issue or concern um, and it's brought to yep. my attention, I'll bring it to the board at the next meeting. Yeah. Good. All right. So that is it for me this evening, unless anyone has any questions for me. Okay, then I'm going to bring up the bylaws. All right, let's move into committee reports. Uh, policy committee, Robin? I'm never sure about the motion, but um, it, when you're it, when it's a committee motion, there doesn't need a second. Is that the deal? Yeah. Is, it, is that right? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Right. Yes, that's correct. I move that uh, the bylaws as um, presented the amendments to the bylaws as presented at the last meeting be accepted. Thank you. Um, I think I had one question. 
Wait, 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 but uh, okay. So, so we don't need, so, so the vote that we're going to take is just on the committee motion, correct? Correct. correct. Okay, thank you. Oh, we can have discussion now. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Discussion, Connie? Um, well, at the end of the last page, we say that the bylaws will be reviewed annually and readopted annually at the regular April meeting. I thought we said it wasn't going to be annually. It's just somewhere else every three years. years. So that's kind of a conflict. At the, if you look on the screen right now, section two review of bylaws, it is reworded um, to say at least every three years as needed. Right. So then at the end, it says every year. And I don't know, it's just kind of a little conflict. Tell me what page it says every year on? Uh, page seven. All right, that's the page I'm displaying right now. Well, mine wasn't changed. Okay. So you changed it there too? After the last meeting, I changed it. Okay, because it was changed somewhere else and not there with the one I Okay, then I'll just change it. And um, we did a little research after the meeting on this, and it turns out that in 2013, 2013 and prior, this was the language. It was only in 2013 that it was changed to annually. So. Any other questions on the bylaw changes, revisions? All those in favor of accepting the uh, board, the um, bylaws as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Good, great. Thank you, that was a good, uh, um, a wonderful assignment and uh, handled very well. I think all the changes are really good ones. So um, it should help us all in the future and take a, a little bit of pressure off Megan for how some of these things have been, are being done. So thank you, Robin. You're welcome. See you Thursday. Right. <laughs> On uh, to the next assignment, right. <laughs> Megan, I have a question about Thursday's meeting. Um, I've been through the uh, policies, the remainder of the policies that we didn't discuss, uh, personnel policies. Um, and I have some editorial comments. Would it be helpful for me to just make them so yeah. that we can all look at them instead of doing it verbally every, like every? Yes, two. that would be very helpful. Okay, so I'll, um, I'll work on that and send you a, a red line of what I, the changes that I thought would be appropriate. And then everybody can discuss those and whatever else they think. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, so okay. now. Okay. And that's just a reminder for the policy committee Thursday night at 6.30, correct? Yes. Okay, scholarship committee, Judy? Oh, yes. Well, we had another meeting and the consensus after the meeting was that um, we would make a committee recommendation to discontinue the scholarship of the library board of directors. So, um, that's where we're. That's what we're recommending. And uh, so, if there's any, I guess we could do discussion now, or. Well, you're making the committee recommendation to the board. Right. So I have to. Right. So we make the recommendation, and then that's first, and then we do the uh, discussion afterwards. Or, okay. So Tia, did you get that recommendation? So can you give me the exact language that you just used, to, Judy? Okay. Committee recommendation for the to discontinue the uh, library board of directors scholarship. Thank you. Thank you, Tia. Any uh, any questions or concerns from any board members? Um, I can tell you from sitting on that committee, it was not discussed. It was not decided lightly. All the pros and cons were weighed, um, and I think that after a lot of discussion. It really was felt that we need to concentrate on the library and that it's it 
any monies raised really should be within the library itself. I think it was a very good decision. And of course, in the past, you had money that was donated, so it made sense. But now that the money's gone, I think it's a wise decision. Right, and, and we don't have ways to, to raise money for a scholarship per se. That really is the bottom line also. Any other discussion or comments? Well, hearing none, all in favor of this recommendation signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Great. Thank you, everyone. Okay, moving down our agenda. Um, we have two issues to discuss tonight, the security system and the RFID system. Um, and I beg your understanding, I think that we're gonna switch it around and do the RFID first and then the security system. Does anyone have any problem with that since they're interrelated with the agenda? No, okay. All right, I'm going to pass things over to Tom. Um, Tom, I think I made you a co-host. Oh, fun. <laughs> Tom will be taking over your screens now. Uh, where to go? Present. Everybody see that? Yes. Okay, great. So um, I've got a short little presentation here about RFID. Hopefully it'll answer some of your questions. Um, then I've got three videos. Uh, they're about a minute and a half each um, showing some of this equipment in use at other libraries uh, around the country. Um, so you can uh, see what it is. Um, to start off though, um, you can see a picture on the, the bottom right is, is actually uh, what the tags look like. And depending upon your screen size, um, it is actually about the size of the tag. They're about half the size of a credit card. Um, they'd be stuck in our books and would be um, passive electronics inside of all of our items to aid in uh, circulation, inventory management, and all of that fun stuff. Um, so what is RFID? It stands for Radio Frequency Identification. Um, it allows for the rapid scanning of, uh, of multiple items simultaneously. Uh, each tag, one of those little credit, half credit card size guys, um, when it's activated, so when it's placed, the, these are, you might've heard the term near field technology. Um, the, these are, uh, these operate on that principle. So what happens is you have a, an activation pad and you'll see some videos of this later. Um, you'll put the books near it and that will activate it to send out a small radio frequency that's unique to that specific uh, item, which will um, then, uh, if it's, say we're doing checkouts, it'll be checked out to the account. If we're doing um, check-ins, it'll be check-in, inventory management, and stuff like that. So um, how does RFID help the library? Um, so it speeds up the circulation process uh, drastically. So rather than right now, you know, you guys know all know how checkout works, but check-in, so when you bring in the books, somebody has to scan all of those items individually um, just the way as um, when they're being uh, checked out. And so the, the possibility of human error exists anywhere in that process, during the checkout, during the check-in, um, and anywhere uh, in between. So by utilizing these little tags, the item is assured to be checked in because if it's placed, what is it? I think it's... Uh, 16 inches, something like that. I think it's a 16 inch radius of the activation pad or deactivation pad. So as long as that item is somewhere near that, it's going to be, um, uh, it's going to be 
checked in, sensitized, whatever it needs, um, as opposed to the actual line of sight of using a barcode scanner that has that little laser light that has to hit the barcode that's you know about the size of my index finger. Um, so I no longer have to guarantee that I'm holding the item straight to hit the barcode and make sure that I'm getting the right barcode because these guys will just be in there working passively. So now you might ask yourself, well, if all these staff are now freed up, you know, just because they're freed up of the, the actions, so staff will be freed from the labor intensive actions of check-in and check-out, allowing them to spend more time with patrons and promote the library services. Inventory management and locating misplaced books will be streamlined and upkeep and maintenance of the collection will also be improved. So no longer can a, you know, as a staff member uh, so heavily engaged in check in and check out that they might have to cut short conversations with, uh, with patrons where they could be pump, uh, telling them about some of our new services, selling them on say eBooks, things like that. Um, our streaming services and, and all upcoming events. Um, so it, it frees them up to focus on the other things, the customer service angle, um, the reshelving of that material, um, those activities. Inventory management, this is a really cool thing as somebody who, 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 who I, always looking for lost books. And so it's, it's this, is, this is wonderful, right? So I get this magic wand that I can walk up and down the aisles and I just wave it near the books. And it tells me if any of the books that are anywheres in that area are any of the books that I'm specifically looking for. So copy of, uh, you know, whatever um, has been marked missing because our, our page or whoever was doing the pull list couldn't find it. I now load it into the wand and I just walk by. And even if it's in the teen department, I'll find it because the wand, you know, as long as I'm somewhere near the book. Um, so, you know, locating things that are, are misplaced. Um, also security gates become far um, better rather than with the, the system that we were using. You had to put a little tag over the, um, the security tag. It's all just deactivated when it's checked out. Um, so we can go back to using gates. Um, and then, like I say, upkeep and maintenance becomes so much streamlined because deletion of items, you simply, again, just need to say, delete all the items that I'm putting on the pad. And so I can put six to eight items, depending upon their thickness. You know, kids' books, you can do a, quite a few more because they're much smaller. But, you know, adult books, if I'm checking out encyclopedias, you're only going to check out two or three of them. Um, but again, it just speeds up all of our activities that are labor intensive and require us to perfectly scan these barcodes every single time. So beyond RFID, right? So just because I'm tagging these items, now they're secure, I can find them. You've also got things like self checkouts where um, rather than again, the patron having to know, oh, I scan the barcode inside the book rather than the ISBN on the back of the book. Um, they can, uh, they'll just put a stack of books on a pad, scan their card and they're checked out to them and they get a receipt either, you know, printed or emailed and all of that. Um, the automatic check-in bin is a really cool thing. So right now we've got the drop slot on the outside of the building, right? What, what would happen is that would be replaced by a uh, slot with a uh, electronic sensor on it. So as soon as you slide it through there, it's checked in, it's removed from your account. So right now for our quarantining, um, you know, I'm getting calls all the time, people saying, oh, this book's still on my account. You know, I dropped it off on Thursday. Well, you know, we're quarantining for a number of days, so it won't be checked in until Monday evening. Then we have to backdate it. We've got to wipe fines if there's any fines that have accrued, things like that. And so this, and it's assured rather than me going, I think I scanned that one. Uh-oh, I got a little distracted because I had to answer the phone. Which is the stack that I had scanned? Oh, it doesn't matter because I just put the stack back on the pad again and it's, and it's done. Um, so the nice thing though is once all of our items are tagged with those little uh, credit card size tags, then we can add in 
these things. So I don't need to get all of it at once. And as the next slide talks about, I think, yes, perfect. Um, this is some really technical stuff here. Um, uh, all the equipment chosen will meet ISO standards set forth in ISO standard 28560-2. The nice thing about the standardization of that is I can buy equipment from one provider and then God forbid they go out of business, it all meets the same standards. So all of this stuff is interchangeable, more or less plug and play between the various providers, as long as they all follow this, which um, thankfully all the providers I've been talking to so far um, meet these standards. Uh, and they also um, work with our evergreen uh, integrated library system, which is our check-in and check-out inventory management system. Um, so uh, as far as all of that's concerned, it should work um, pretty seamlessly uh, with, with our software. Uh, Ridgefield is using uh, an RFID system and I was involved in Danbury's uh, transfer several years ago um, back when I was there. Uh, they're, they're, they're really great systems. Um, so now I've got the, the three videos. Um, so this first one is just sort of a general overview of it. And well, I'll let the librarian explain. Hello, I'm Deborah Sears, Director of Library Services for Leon County. You may have noticed some physical changes inside the libraries over the last few weeks. The library has implemented radio frequency identification or RFID which allows wireless technology to read information on RFID tags placed inside library items. This makes checking out items fast and easy and will give the library better inventory control. Just scan your library card number and place all items on the glass at once. They will check out simultaneously, no need to scan each item by itself. Want to renew an item you've already checked out? Simply place the renewal item on the glass simultaneously and the self-checkout machine will tell you which items have renewed. Even though physical changes have been completed at each library location to accommodate these new self-checkout machines and library gates, this does not mean that public service positions will be eliminated. Staff will always be available to assist with checkout and other services. We look forward to seeing you in the library. Ooh, hold on. Oh, there we go. Um, so now this one is specifically about um, the self checkouts and you'll see uh, just how they're utilized in, in this library. We're doing self checkout stations to help patrons you know, get in, get out. That way they don't have to wait in line. It frees up the staff to do more stuff. You know, We can get books back from the back shelf back onto the front shelves and into patrons hands again quicker is meant for also anti-theft technology and also just for ease of access. These pads, they use RFID technology or radio frequency identification. In the past, we've used magnetic technology, but now we use a radio technology. So you don't even have to scan a barcode. You just simply place it on the gray pad and it checks the book out for you. First, we take one of our brand new books that we get from the library. We get our library card. We select checkout. When it asks for a barcode, we simply put our barcode underneath this laser. If your barcode is not available, you can always enter your account number manually. Uh, it looks like Tom froze. <laughs> So, oh. are we there? Am I back? Back. You might just want to move to the next one now. Yeah. Just skip over that guy. We're doing self checkout stations no? too. Hey, come on. Okay. 
so now this is the book return and um this is uh these these are the automatic returns and, and they're uh, they're really neat back in 2016 we made the switch over to radio frequency identification or rfid technology Oops. what did i do yeah, Tom, maybe if I play it from mine, because we're both on the same on the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Here, I'll stop sharing and then you can take over. All right. I just have to find it. Okay. Well, Megan's bringing that up. Does anybody have any questions so far about the RFID um, or the um, how it works, things like that? So um, I just like to say, oh, go ahead, Tia. I just have a comment. But you oh, I, I was just going to say, my question is, so it, does this mean that patrons are going to have to, I know it sounds like a silly question, but are patrons are going to have to bring their library cards with them? Can no, they? Not necessarily. Um, okay. I mean, as, as always, yes, I ask that you have your card with you because it's just so much easier. Um, we've always allowed for checkouts um, uh, via a license and, and, uh, and other methods as well. There is a third option um, that uh, Bibliomation, our consortium, uh, put together the ACORN uh, catalog app. Um, and, and from that, uh, you can, oh, my screen's backwards, so that looks terrible. Sorry, right, um, right. But one of the things that you can do is there's the show card button. And from that, I can scan this on either of our current self-checkout machines, actually. It's just the barcode. Um, and that's actually what the librarian in the first video I played for you um, did. She scanned it from her phone. Um, and so that's, that's an option as well. Um, so, you know, I mean... I think, I think it's fair to say that at least 75% of the people, if not more, coming into the building have a, uh, a smartphone on them. Um, right. And if we could get, get them all onto the app, then that would be fantastic as well. Oh, that's because great. Uh, within this app, you, you know, not only does it have the show card feature, but you can also search the catalog, place hold. So say you're sitting in front of the TV at the end of the day, uh, something comes on about a new author or a book that's coming out. Rather than having to go to your computer, um, you, you can just pull your phone out, put the title in, and place the hold on it right there for us. Wow. Uh, wow. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, no. And it, it's not as if we're going to do away with the service desk that would prevent people from, oh, sure. uh, from being able to come up and, and speak to us. You know? Let me um, play the video, and then I'll talk a little bit about timelines and what this would mean for the public. So let's see, get this going. Uh, I'm not set up to share with sound for one moment. In 2016, we made the switch over to radio frequency identification or RFID technology. Um, it's what allows patrons to now check out wirelessly at our self-service stations. Um, we decided we can make it one step better by now adding RFID self-service book return. The book return is automated, self-service. You walk up, you drop your items in, it sucks them right inside and checks them in instantly. When we go and get the book drop out in the morning where patients have dropped their books overnight, we used to have to check them in by hand. Now we can take in the entire cart of newly returned books, drop them right through the sort, and they are now checked in, they are now already sorted, and they are ready to be put back on the shelf so the next round of people can get them. These systems are designed by Linkso Systems Incorporated. They are the same people who do conveyor belts for Amazon, the United States Postal Service, so they're very reliable. Any problem we've ever had is just a phone call away. To return an item, simply take your item, place it on the table here, and slide it forward. 
and the sorter does the rest. If you try to put in two items at once, it can only recognize one item at a time. It will come back and tell you multiple items detected. So we'll take our books back, we'll wait for the green light, and then we try again. And there it goes. And those books are returned. As you're turning in books, you can see that your items are being listed here on your return sheet. When all of your books are turned in, you can click Done. It'll ask if you want a receipt. That's amazing. And there we are. We have a limit of 25 items, and some people really want all 25 items, and then so they return their books and immediately want to check out more, but someone will tell them, we haven't checked in your current books. So what do we do? We now have an instant system where they can check in their books instantly and go and get more without any worry. It's also easier for staff because as soon as they're checked in, they are sorted into different groups. So they're easier to get back on the shelf and back in your hands. I, I just like to say, uh, I didn't want to interrupt the flow, but uh, in my last job as a, well, my last years as a technology journalist, I was writing a lot about the emerging field of RFID, and it's great to see that it's come to Bethel and is now helping out the library. Now, the last two videos that Tom showed are also a few years old, so there's been quite a few updates to the software. Oh, yeah. Um, so there are a lot of features where you can now put in multiple items. It'll show you on a screen what you've returned. And if you think that's incorrect, you can push a button and it'll send those books back out to you. So you can be sure that what you have in your hands are the books that you're returning. Um, so that alleviates some of the stress of people saying, well, I know I returned this item because now they can see in front of them the list of the items that they're returning. Um, but I do want to say is this is not the kind of project where we tell you we're doing it and then all of a sudden within one year you see all of these things magically take place. <laughs> this is a long-term plan. We're talking about over the course of three to five years making this happen. Starting out simple with a campaign to get the books tagged, maybe running a volunteer program over the summer where we have high schoolers come in and tag the inside of books. Um, the next step is then putting out self-checkout equipment for the public first and keeping the circulation staff or the circulation desk in the same format it's currently in. Then from there, updating the circulation staff's equipment and eventually leading to the self-check-in system. And then from there, um, check out lockers so people can check out, they can check out holds when the library is closed. So these systems give us a lot of options but they can be expensive and they can take time. So we want, I wanted Tom to show you this system today to see the direction with which we are taking the library and to understand what's happening and the time frame. Because people are gonna ask you as board members, what's going on at the library with this? Why do I see self-checkout stations? Why do I see ID tags inside of books? And that way you have that information to share with the public and you can answer those questions. Um, does anybody have questions for Tom so far? Yeah, I have one question. Um, how does this work with security? I mean, the stations are there, but how do you know that somebody has actually done the checking out? When they leave, is there some way that it's checked? So security gates, just like at any um, any store, right? You know, you got those, those big uh, metal guys on, on either side of you. Um, those work with the RFID system. And so it's either active or it's deactive. So when it's checked out to you, it's now deactivated. Otherwise it goes bing, 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 bing. And you know, oh, I, I think you might've forgotten to check out some items or perhaps those didn't scan correctly. You know, I mean, we, we handle this as, as, as gently as we can. Um, and uh, so the nice thing is they actually have, so all the pictures you saw were actually just the little square ones that go in the backside of books. They also make ones that get directly replaced over disks. So though we have locking cases, so that kind of mitigates a lot of that, um, 
you can get these ones that go directly over the disc. So that prevents anybody from somehow opening up the case and stealing the disc out because it's stuck to this disc. You peel it off the disc, you have destroyed that disc. So yeah, no, security gets improved drastically. Um, with that. Yeah. You may remember the old gates we had and that we stopped using them. Um, the reason we stopped using them is because it was they were not unique identifiers. They were merely the same tag going into every item. And the only way to deactivate them was to put a due date card over the tag to block the sensor from reading it. Now, what that meant is people who were using the self-checkout, if they decided they wouldn't, didn't want due date cards, they wouldn't put them in. That would cause the sensors to go off. People returning items in the building, if they took the due date card slips out, the sensors would go off coming in. So the sensors were constantly going off anytime somebody came in or left to the point where the staff couldn't continue to stop patrons because the majority of the time there wasn't a problem and staff started to feel uncomfortable doing so. But with this system, it automatically, the second it goes onto the pad and goes onto someone's card, it is now no longer in our system to activate the uh, security system. So it really streamlines it. So when we hear the alarm go off, we know it's legitimate. And oftentimes we can just phrase it as, as we think one of your items was misscanned. Good, that's good. All right, any other questions for Tom on this system? So actually, it feels just like the grocery store. So you have uh, the option of scanning your groceries or you would have scanning your books, but you still could go up to the circulation desk and have staff yes. do the same process is what you're saying. Yeah, I'm not interested in, in removing staff or forcing people to interact only with, with computers and robots and things like that. Um, I think the very nice thing about the library is that that personal touch that you can get by interacting with one of our circulation staff members or any of our staff members really. What's nice now is if if half of our patrons use self checkout that allows the staff to then better engage with the patrons in front of them because so often now a patron will come up and they'll have questions but we'll have to constantly tell them please give me a moment while I answer the phone or excuse me I do have a patron who needs to check out I'll get right back to you so this allows us to really focus on the patron in front of us and have better one-on-one -on -one exchanges. Tia? Um, okay, since I'm treasurer, um, is this, what, what's the cost for this? And, and is this part of monies that we already have or is this part of what we're going to be fundraising for or? So we're gonna talk about the security system next. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna talk about money. Um, that's why we put the RFID system first. Okay. Um, so does anybody have any more questions about the RFID system? Robin. I just have a question about space. Like for the sorter, it looks like it takes up a lot of space, but do you guys have the space to handle all that equipment? We come in different sizes. We also don't have to have the sorter. Um, we can just have it where all the books go into one bin and they're sorted by staff. So I'm not concerned about that at this time. And then down the road, we can discuss, you know, alternative options or removing the closet and making it an open space. But in the next two to three years, we're not gonna have any of those changes. Um, and honestly, I think we're, depending on our fundraising capabilities, a couple of years away from self <laughs> Yeah, Richfield actually put theirs in a glass box so you can see it through the windows. Um, and it's significantly longer than the one shown in the video. I mean, the one shown in the video was maybe six feet or so long, eight feet long. Um, but not, we don't have the space for that currently. But um, like I said, the nice thing is that it's a, um, oh, what's the word that I want? Uh, it, it's a it's a customizable right so i can start out with just tags and self checkouts then next year i can add self check in and then you know three years down the line when i have enough funds i can do an automatic sorter um you don't need to get the whole thing at once so and we can gauge public response so we start with tagging the collection and say one set one checkout system on the first floor if we find that children's department is responding to it really well, then we can put a second one in there. So we can gauge the behavior of the public and see who's making use of it 
and who is uh, preferring to do it with a staff member. Um, and this is nice compared to the other systems we've had. You know, so often people come in and they check out the ISBN barcode and get frustrated because nothing's happening because they don't realize there's a separate barcode for the library. And that one negative exchange turns them off to the system altogether. So they never go back to using it. Whereas with a system like this, if you can just put your books on a pad, you hear a beep, you see your list, it's a lot more user-friendly and we're more likely to have repeat users. The kids are gonna love sliding those books into the return. Yeah. <laughs> I love the idea that right away, you're gonna know it's back instead of waiting four days and thinking that, did I or did I not return it? Because I know I did, right? Uh, Megan, Richfield and Danbury are very happy with the system? Or were there uh, any negativity? Tom, do you wanna to answer that one? Yeah, um, I've been in communication. I, I, uh, I haven't spoken to Danbury in some time about their system. I've been more in more communication with Ridgefield just because we share a system and I, I don't know. I really like the guy at Ridgefield. He's a nice guy. Anyways, um, <laughs> so I've been in communication with their head of technology over there and they're absolutely thrilled with it. Um, the, the circulation team there loves it too. Um, it's really sped things up and just freed up their staff to, to focus more on things. Uh, I, like, um, I think it was Tia maybe who said, uh, the kids, I mean, not only the check in, but the check out. Uh, I mean, they just love putting the books on there and doing it themselves. And it's, it's been really beneficial to them, um, not only in, in saving staff time, but saving patron time. I mean, patrons can run in and run out. If you're somebody who prefers a self checkout because you don't wanna talk to people, um, you, you now really have that option. I mean, you can come in, get your items and, you know, you have no need to actually conversate with any of us. So, um, yeah. and certainly in this time with, uh, everything that's going on about touch surfaces and, and low contact and all, um, moving forward in a, with a system like this, I think is, um, important because, well, anyways, we'll see. <laughs> but it also enhances privacy patrons who have or need to check out items that are things they want to be discreet, they now have the ability to. They don't have to worry about a staff member looking at the items they're checking out. So if they're checking out on a topic that's of sensitivity to them, they know that they're the only one seeing what they're checking out. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah, that is a good point. All right. Um, so for the security system, and then we'll get back to money because I know it's important. Um, so pre-COVID, Tom had put together a plan for a security system that we had presented to the town during budget season, and they had said to come back later and propose it. Now, we intended to do that when COVID hit, and that became the last thing on our to-do list once COVID hit. So now we're coming full circle again, and we're looking at our security system. Now, one of the nice things about COVID was it gave us, specifically Tom, the opportunity to work with the town's IT department and um, really learn how they're implementing services. So we've now reapproached the security system, looking at um, aligning with how the town provides security. So we are going to move forward with putting a security system, but we would like to use the funds we already have in the budget. So we put in this year for uh, salaries with the anticipation that COVID would come to an end. At the time when we put the budget together, uh, we, we didn't realize COVID was going to be a year plus of our lives. So staffing was reduced during COVID. Uh, we didn't bring, fill vacancies because we had more than enough staff to meet the needs. So we have quite a bit of money left in salaries. So my request to the board is that any money left in salaries be reallocated to go into the equipment maintenance budget. And that would then cover the cost of a new security system and any funding left would go towards starting the process for the RFID system. The hope being that we'd be able to tag all the items in the library within a year. So from there then, Tia, we would start um, discussing funding the equipment. Uh, one of the first things we're looking at doing is the ARPA grant. 
that we actually have to submit in the next month. Um, that they actually encouraged this type of system with that funding because it does um, make ease of access for uh, patrons in the library. So we would use those funds to start up the project purchasing self checkout equipment and pads. And then that way we would get the first steps done within the within the one year. So how, how much do you think that first stage is going to be? Uh, yeah, round numbers, round numbers. Oh, well, um, Tom, do you have the quotes for the tags? Yeah, tags are depending upon what kind of tags. If we're just going standard tags, they're about 12 cents a piece. We've got about, what, 80,000 items? Yeah. Call it 100 just to, for, to make our math a little easier. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so what, what does that put us at? Um, 12, you know, $12,000, something um, right. like that. Um, so right off the bat, you know, I mean, that, that's a lot of money just because, you know, yeah, yeah. looks. Um, then on top of that, uh, you know, if we do OS self-check out, depending upon which company we go with, it's kind of interesting. Once you get away from the tags, that's where things start to change. Um, everybody sells the tags for about the same price, mm. but then one person self checkout, maybe it's, well, here, uh, you know, uh, maybe it's $7,000, $8,000 a piece, or what's another one? Um, $6,000, you know, so they're all in the, and then I've got another at twelve thousand dollars. So you know, um, the 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 prices are I don't want to say all over the place, but you know, starting at six and, and working their way up. Uh, but then you have to take into account you know what you get with that. Um, do you get a really beautiful um, stand? Do you get uh, a, a screen that's customizable? Um, we didn't play a bunch of the videos for you, but some of them. Um, we can have them advertise our programs the way that our DSBs do, do auto recommendations of books. Oh, you checked out The Hobbit, you should really check out, you know, what have you, another fantasy book. Um, so, and, and that's where we, we really start seeing the difference. Um, but so initial to get this off the ground, I would say about $20,000. And the 20,000 is after the tax, correct? No, that includes the tax. That includes, okay. So you're saying, so like another 8,000, roughly eight to 10,000 is what you're saying you think to get a self-checkout system actually physically working is gonna, is gonna be, right? Yeah, so that, in, you know, in that again, if we go with say a six or $8,000 self-checkout, if- right. I go with the ten thousand or twelve thousand dollar self checkout, then that bumps it up to say you know twenty five thirty. Okay. Um, How many machines do you get? For for that, we get one of those self checkouts. So in oh, that video okay. you saw um, with the, the the young gentleman there um, using the machine, there there were I think three in mm -hmm. their video. Um, I'm not quite sure who their provider was. It, they didn't look familiar to me, but um, so. You know, figure they probably spent twenty thousand dollars just on those machines, maybe even thirty, depending upon. Um, you know, if we get one machine and then you know the tags, you're probably somewhere in the twenty twenty five thousand um, dollar. Is there like a recommendation for um, a number, of, uh, sort of an ideal number of machines for a goal? Like, I, I assume we could start with one and. So Tom, I'll take this question. Sure. So the thought is to start with one machine, especially since we're going to have to really tag by department. We can't mm -hmm. haphazardly do this or it's mm -hmm. going to be very confusing for the public. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll most likely start with either the new section or the children's department. So that way it's very easy. You know that anything coming from the children's department can be used as self-checkout machine and we would put it in that department. Um, ideally, we'd like to have two uh, to get things going. And then we would use the grant to cover the cost. 
I also think it'd be great if um, the board purchased one because it's a great marketing tool for fundraising. You know, we talk about what are we raising funds for? What have we done with those funds? Um, a self-checkout machine is a really great tool to use. The same with the friends. You know, having the Friends logo on our self-checkout machine say, and this main screen saying provided by the Friends of the Bethel Public Library, I mean, that's, that's phenomenal marketing. So we, we do have to look at the size of each collection and the space and determine what would have the best impact. And, and so being a devil's advocate here. All right. So, so let's say we've got our self-checkout. We've got our RFIDs. What's the check-in side of that is that another twenty thousand for the checking the books back in we're not there yet we're not looking to do self-check-in right now we're focusing on and also too is that's you know pricing does come down over time sure as more companies so i would rather focus on the check-in the check out side of things right now um and then look at that later on down the road because I think it's more important that the public benefit from this before the staff. But we, we do really want to make sure this is a project that's funded by um, outside sources and keep as much of it away from the taxpayers as possible because they are enhancements to mm -hmm. our library and our services. Mm -hmm. And one last question. So how what do we think the average life of one of these uh, stations are, for example, are, are the RFIDs perpetual? Um, do they have to be replaced every 10 years, five years, something? And what about the machines themselves? Do we, do we think that those, I mean, I know it's hard to judge, but I mean, is this something that probably has a, a, a shelf life of, a, of several years? So I'm going to let Tom answer this one because I I know he did um, take the time to speak with somebody in the field regarding this. So they have the, the the technology itself, the the self checkouts, things like that. Um, just like anything, any computer, phone, what have you, any piece of technology. I mean, it has a shelf life simply because its processing capabilities diminish over time as things become more complex. Uh, I would say that you could probably get eight to 12 years out of a self checkout or a self check in um, anything more than that. I, I'd, I'd, I'd be impressed, um, but I wouldn't put it outside the realm of possibility because it's not going to change that drastically either. It's not like your computer, which, you know, 15 years ago, you used to play solitaire and do some, you know, simple stuff on the web. Now what it does on the web is far more complex. RFID is not going to change that much. What the station is capable of, so these book recommendations and stuff like that, but the actual RFID, that's not going to change. But just like anything, I mean, any piece of technology left running 24-7, 365 for 10 years is, is going to start to sure. run issues. Um, obviously they come with warranties and we can get extended warranties and I've got quotes for that and all, um, and that starts to add up, but is it a bad thing? You know, um, the tags themselves, as long as they are placed correctly and the book itself is not terribly manhandled, then they should last indefinitely. Um, okay. The tags. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, the technology is 20 years old at this point. So, you know, if there's any that, you know, uh, you know, in 30 years, I guess we'll see exactly how long these things really last. But um, the tags themselves, there's no batteries in them. They are simply powered by being near that pad. That's what causes them to then send okay. out their radio signal. So okay. they're completely passive. There's, there's no, there, there's absolutely no harm in any of the books, just in case any of you started to get that concern. Um, until it is near that pad is when it creates that radio signal. Um, and like I say, as long as they're not put on the crease of a book or, um, you know, certainly with paperbacks and all, just because there's some bending there, you might run into things. But if you're talking hardbacks, um, I, I don't think you'd have any issues. The book itself would probably burn out before the uh, 
uh, before the, the tags do. Yeah. And Thank just you. note, Tom has spent the last two years doing extensive weeding on the adult collection to be sure that we're not tagging items that we're going to be discarding in the yep. next year or two. So let's not waste 12 these. cents on these. <laughs> Does anyone have a question who hasn't had a chance to talk? Okay. Um, any questions about allocating the remaining funds in our budget? Okay. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I think it's fantastic. I, I think it. it's exciting and it's, a, it's an opportunity that we do have some funding left this year that we can move ahead. It would be a shame not to use the money and, and, uh, and grow our library. So just dollars wise, um, you wanna take the remaining funds from the salary account? Yes. Um, which would, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how much when I look at it. So roughly at this point, we're still running numbers for the end of the year, but we're looking at over $45,000 left in part-time salaries thus far. So you're comfortable taking $45,000 from that line? Yeah, at using that line yes. And moving it to equipment maintenance? Yes. So my, my actual request is that we take the remaining funds from salaries, since I don't have an exact number, only because I really mm -hmm. won't have that for another couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, and as long as the money is allocated and the purchase order is drafted before June 30th, um, then the money is earmarked. So ideally, I would make the order based on what's left as of June 15th. Okay, so there's not really a dollar amount. It will just be the, the remaining balance as of June 15th. Yes. So would any board member like to make that motion? Um, this is, a, I think, an exciting motion to make <laughs> moving into the future. So moved. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll make a motion. A um, motion to allocate the well, remaining funds from the salary account and move it to equipment maintenance. Is that correct, Megan? Yeah, sorry. Uh, there was a little glitchy. So I think I heard Robin say she'd make the motion. Okay, okay go ahead, Robin. So I'll Robin, make a motion that we move the money that's allocated to the salary account, the remaining money from the salary account into the, what are we calling it? The equipment, equipment, management. equipment maintenance. maintenance account. Great. Thank you, Robin. Yeah. After June 15th, right? I don't know if we need that. Right. right. And a second? I second. Okay. Robin, Judy, second. second? Okay. Great. Uh, any more discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion that's on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. I think it's unanimous and it's exciting, Megan. And Tom, thank you for your hard work on this. Well, Tom's got a lot of work ahead of him, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's excited. You have uh, job security. We really need you. <laughs> that's exciting. Exciting. It is. This was a very full meeting. I think we covered a lot of ground. And Megan, do you have anything else before we adjourn? No, that's all I have for this evening. Good. Okay. I'll take all this exciting news back to the friends tomorrow night, and um, maybe they'd like to support us in this new endeavor. With some, I, some I know that Megan has some ideas in mind already. <laughs> So now I have an, a better sense of where we're going, and it is very exciting. It is. It's great. It's the world as it is. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, thank you all for, for attending tonight. Does anybody have anything else they care to discuss before we adjourn? No? Okay, so I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Robin. A second? Second. Mary Spain. Great. Good. Thank you, guys. It was a, a good meeting. Good to see you. We have to vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That's okay. <laughs>